Hi and welcome to my channel Budget Audio Review. Now today I'll be talking about cassette decks. Just give you my opinion, a few tips maybe of uh, what to look for when buying a new cassette deck. Your first cassette deck, this is really aimed at beginners, newbies really. Just some faults and obviously if anyone knows more about it than me, uh, leave any comments down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Maybe pull me up on something I said wrong or whatever, or give some other tips, and that would be great. Because uh, if you're watching this video, any videos of mine or anyone's really, always go down and look at the comments because you're going to get other people's opinions and you're going to pick up a few tips, which I do on quite a lot of videos I watch. Go down to the comments and you may have to scroll down lots. Not so much in my case, just a few comments on my videos, but on some people's, you may have to scroll down a lot, but then you may find something interesting that someone's got there to help you out in your journey trying to pick up you know some decent hi-fi uh, a reasonable price uh, that's what this channel is all about and it is really budget we're talking about i'm probably talking about a cassette that you're going to go and buy maybe from a second hand shop ebay places like that probably ranging from 20 to 60 to 80 pounds somewhere around there i'm not going to go above that really because you obviously gonna, the more you spend the more you're going to get for your money what well, you should do anyway but we're just going to call it budget this is really for someone that's going to get their first cassette deck don't want to spend too much money maybe going to record off their uh, turntable a bit of vinyl maybe select a few tracks on one album select a few tracks on another make a little bit of a mixed tape up or they may have a load of cassettes sitting in a drawer and they were thinking well i wonder what was on that i remember that making this cassette up many years ago it would be nice to listen back to it at a reasonable quality you know quality sound wise so that's what i'm really aiming up here i'm going to kind of take each stage each kind of bit to look for in cassette wise uh, as the video goes along so i'll be touching on different subjects uh, first of all buying and towards the end of the video just a few tips maybe once you've got the deck home to do to try and get a little bit more a better sound out of the unit now we'll be putting a demo of both these cassettes two separate videos of a tape uh just to give you an idea what they sound like maybe give you an idea of what to expect buying an old cassette deck now these are old these are 40 40 years plus old so they've got some downfalls we'll come to that bit later on but to give you an idea maybe what to expect if you're buying a deck that old um, so yeah I'll do a little sound test but uh, I'll just talk about these decks very very quickly this is a, a Technic 676 deck uh, this came out in 1974 this would have cost you in the US $460 here in the UK $279 so quite a bit of money but this was pretty much top of their range at the time I think weighs an absolute ton got so much stuff inside it's untrue down below here is a Sharp RT3151 known in the US as the RT3838 and this come out around about 1979 would have cost you nearly £300 at the time as well uh, and this is a bit more of a gimmicky it's not a bad deck it's a middle of the road deck really uh, you're paying for uh, extras here this computer control which rewinds the tape forward backwards pick certain tracks out you want to go five forward five back all that kind of stuff it can do by seeing the gap in the tape in between records that you're recording so you're paying you know extra buttons here that you probably not you, you may not need maybe a bit more of a gimmick but you know you, you're going to lose out in other parts of the machine paying for that extra bit in the middle there so uh, let's uh, talk uh, different kind of groups different things to look out for and the first thing i think we'll start off is uh, the difference between a two-head deck and a three-head deck right i'm just going to touch on each subject uh, briefly as the video I've gone for literally ever because this buying a cassette deck is a bit of a minefield really because uh, there's so many combinations and factors to take into place different kind of heads all different things different you know different tapes you can use all kinds of stuff so uh yeah we're just going to touch on each subject briefly uh, i'm not going to go into it too much detail but uh, like i say we're kind of setting this out 20 to 80 pounds somewhere around there so the difference between a two and three head deck is uh pretty much this really a two head deck you know you can get some good two head decks but generally speaking a three head deck is better than a two head deck three heads is uh, sorry start off with two heads two heads is just the a raised head counts as one head that's uh, an head that's going to raise the tape so anything previously on it it's going to raise it's going to pass along the tape getting towards the record and playback head which is a, is one head that does both it records and plays back so this is two heads in one so as you can imagine they're kind of fitting two things into one unit and like anything else when that happens it's usually best to have two things separate uh, you're going to get a better sound um, better quality out of it really so generally speaking a two head deck is uh, inferior to a three head deck obviously price depending as well but uh, you know 
if you get a really cheap three head deck and you get a really really expensive two head deck I mean, it could be not a lot between them but uh, generally speaking a three head deck is better than a two head deck with the three head deck uh, you've got an advantage here as well uh, with, with, if you went back to that two head deck you have to put you know you're pressing play and recall to record something you'd have to wait for it to fully record to so press stop press rewind then have a listen to how it sounds now depending on how much of a recording it could be a three or four minute recording you may have to wait three or four minutes to hear how it sounds and you realize you've got the recording level up too high or you forgot to do the bias on the tape or something like that and you don't have to start again with a freer deck you can listen to it live so you press play and record your source goes in and once it records on the first head the playback head is right next to it so you can hear literally it's a fraction of a second afterwards what you're actually recording how it's actually coming out of the tape so while you're playing it well, sorry while you're recording it you can also kind of play it at the same time so you're listening to what you're recording near enough in real time just a few milliseconds difference so if that sounds rubbish or distorted etc you can straight away press stop and turn the volume or the recording level down should I say and start straight away again without waiting for it to get to the end of that three or four minute session you're recording hopefully you know what I'm on about because I've kind of lost track myself there a little bit but uh, yeah so generally speaking a three head deck is better than a two head deck right we're going to go on to twin cassette deck versus a single cassette deck uh, as you can see these are both single Set just one transport in each unit. That uh, Marantz 4050 I had was a twin cassette deck, two cassettes. So the first one on the left hand side would just do the playback, and the right hand side would do the play and recall. Now, some of them do both play and recall. You can get a twin cassette deck with play and recall on both sides, but generally speaking, I think one's usually just a playback, and the other one's a playback and recall, and that way you can do tape to tape if you wanted to but don't forget once you're doing tape to tape a bit like when you used to buy these uh, pirate videos years ago someone may have a master copy and so I'll do a copy for you but that second copy was quite inferior to the first the picture was more blurry etc so you will lose quality from tape to tape so if you're recording one tape to another you will lose that quality and generally speaking a single cassette like this uh, money for money kind of thing is going to sound better than a twin because you're paying for two units so you're putting half the money into each unit here you're putting all the money into one unit so generally speaking a one cassette is better than a two but the two has got its place like I say people may want to do a tape to tape or may just like the look of it uh, two cassettes going at once or whatever so I um, mean you know, it's really your choice but uh, generally speaking uh, a one cassette in a particular component unit is better than two Right, the next subject I'm going to come across, I'm going to cover, say cover these all briefly, is, is Dolby. Um, you've got Dolby B, Dolby C and Dolby S. Uh, I haven't really used Dolby S to be honest with you, so I don't know what that sounds like, but it's supposed to be pretty good apparently. Um, yeah, so I mean, if, you, you know, if the deck hasn't got it, it ain't the end of the world. It's going to be probably be an old deck. Probably not going to be the end of the world because a lot of people don't even use the Dolby. But I do read a lot of forums and people's opinions on different stuff and whatever. And there's lots of people that don't believe in it at all, like, you know, I mean, never ever use it. Uh, just record with it off and play back with it off. Then you've got some people that play with it, you know, record with it on, uh, and then turn it off uh, once they actually play the uh, track back they've just recorded. And this way the higher frequencies come through, uh, a lot brighter sounding, where if you kept it in, it'd be a bit duller maybe on some machines, etc. So, um, you know, everyone uses these Dolbys differently. So if, it's, if, you've, if you come across a deck with just one of them, say for Dolby B, for instance, but you like the deck and everything else about it, it's good. I won't worry too much. If it's got Dolby uh, B and C, well, that's, that's good. If it's got Dolby B, C and S, uh, especially S, like I say, apparently, I haven't heard this, but apparently it's supposed to be really, really good. Uh, from what I have read, then that's even better. Like, you know, I mean, that's great. So, um I don't think it's too much to worry about really uh, the Dolby business because uh, once you get it you may think I'm never going to use it or I'm only going to use it for this bit or whatever so um, uh, I don't know you know what I mean I think it's a bit up in the air the Dolby business so um, it's something you're going to come across and you're going to say to yourself well should I get this one because it's just got B should I get this one because it's got B and C so it must be better it's got C it may just have C uh, and yes like I say that may be a, a bit swinging it in favour that it's got the yes because uh, like I say, I haven't heard it myself, but uh, what I've heard, it sounds pretty good. So uh, if you can get a, a deck with S, then, you know, it's probably the one to uh, sway towards, maybe. 
Okay, the next subject, just briefly, is uh, piano keys versus um, logic controls, which is this is just a little, you know, soft touch control. So if I just press play very gently, just a little tap of it, it'll play the cassette. For this one here, for me to press play, I'd actually have to give it a bit of force, like a piano key, push it down, and then it'll play. And if I come to press stop, quite a bit of force on the stop to stop it. Same with rewind, I'm gonna have to push it down. With this one here, just a little tap, rewind, just a little tap. Not much effort. Both these decks are full out and stop, uh, on play, rewind, and forward fast. Uh, so it's, you know, it's down to you really. If you had two decks, um, One's got this soft control kind of touch, and this has got a piano, but one was better spec than the other, and that's what I'd go for, really, like you would be. I'm not, I haven't got a preference between the two. You may have, you may not want these keys sticking out so much. You may just want this little soft touch, and you may want a remote control one as well. I mean, this is remote control. It's a great big lead that plugs in the back. I haven't got the remote, and it's gonna be a separate remote on a lead, because this is so old. This isn't remote control at all, but if you get a bit of a more newer deck, it may be, got a remote control so that's something else to think about as well but um, it's not too much aggro coming up just pressing either the piano key or the soft touch key you know it's your preference really right I've covered quite a few things there I think um, but what I'm going to do now is um, talk about buying a deck that's as old as these maybe compared to a deck a little bit newer uh, both these have got underlying problems shall we say that needs sorting out and I haven't really got time to do both so I'll be getting rid of the top one, I'm not to say keeping the bottom one for sentimental reasons more than anything else. Um, I'll say nearly 50 years old, now it's got problems here, if you're going to go and buy a deck 50 years old, maybe a silver fronted one like this, you're going to expect it not to be in mint and sound fantastic, I don't think, so. it may sound alright, you know what I mean, but it, it's probably going to be things wrong with it, you know, the circuit inside, a few things they may need replacing, uh, refurbish, that kind of thing. It's got a little bit of noise on one of the channels here, just a little bit. This switch here, which um, which one is it? This one here, which uh, is two inputs in this. It's, you can plug a tuner into the back of this because it's got an MPX filter for the tuner uh, to cut out frequencies. This this is going back a few years ago now they use that. Uh, and it's got that tuner input, or it's got the normal line input. Even though I've cleaned this switch a couple of times now, maybe I'll give it a couple of more cleans, it's still a bit noisy and it don't always work, it, you know, sometimes it does, you might just have to give it a couple of flicks for it to kick in. So um, I've been recalling using the tuner input, that seems to be the more uh, the more reliable and getting better contact, so better recording. So that's that, these uh, record level. Now, if you come to buy a deck, uh, if you get a really, really cheap one, it may have something called uh, ALC written on it, automatic level control. So when you go to record something, uh, you haven't got no knob for the record level, it does it automatically. This is on a lower end deck, uh, always best to try and get one with a record level, so you can do your own record levels. One for each channel normally, it may be a split knob, where one channel's like on the outside of the knob, and the inside of the knob is say the left and the outside the right. It may be something like this, where the record level's just got one knob that does both channels, but uh, I've got a little balance control here, so that I balance the channels up, so I'll get them both exactly where I want them. So that's something to look out for a record level. You may have some headphones on there as well, so you can uh, listen to it privately uh, rather than going through your amplifier, etc. Some microphone inputs if you uh, require a microphone to be plugged into it. And if I'm listening by the headphones as well on this particular deck, I've got an output level as well, so I can adjust the volume on the headphones. And I think it actually uh, adjusts the volume through the uh, RCA or phono sockets at the back as well. If uh, memory serves me right, so that's just a few extra buttons here on this machine. Also, this machine's got a normal uh, cassette button on it, and it's got the uh, chrome uh, bias setting on there as well. And so is this deck here, and also does ferry chrome as well. Three different settings on this deck. You may get some other decks with the metal setting as well, so you can change it to metal. So, um, things to look out for obviously, if you're getting a deck and it's just got uh, the normal and the chrome, and you see another deck that's got the metal. Uh, facility, uh, check the specs and that of both decks, I'll talk about that in a minute and uh, obviously if it's got the, the better one would be more favourable, uh, gives you more options uh, to record with than just a chrome one maybe, so something to look out for there. So like I say, you buy this deck, you get it home, uh, the heads may need replacing, I mean it, these heads and these decks is, is different types of heads in different decks uh, and they'll give us you know different kind of sound characteristics as well. 
and some of them wear out quicker than others. Uh, if I just turn this piece of paper over, I've been looking around uh, and a few people commented also in a few of other videos of mine that these Akai Glass GX Eds uh, seem to be like last quite a long time. Um, pretty much um, non-wearable, uh, you know, not going to wear out kind of thing. As well as these Sony uh, Sendust Ferret Ferret Eds. So it's a Sony Sendust Ferret Ed. That gets a, a good uh, kind of uh, feedback. Uh, looking through the forums and that, this is another ed that lasts a long time. Where you may get some other eds that wear out a bit quicker. So this is 50 years old if it's been used a lot. Chances are you could get one where the eds have been worn out. So when you come to record, it sounds a bit muffled. When you come to play back, the eyes, the top end isn't there so much. And it still sounds a bit muffled as well. So something to bear in mind when buying a really old deck. I mean, it, it can happen with a, a deck that's just a few years old, I suppose, someone's been really, really non-stop using it. Um, but obviously the older the deck, the more prone that is to happen. So uh, when you're buying an older deck, you're gonna run into a few problems, I think. Belts may need changing these decks as well. This is a belt drive. You can get a direct drive uh, cassette deck where the, uh, there's no belts at all. The motor's actually directly driving the spindles, the capstan or whatever, either directly or through gears. So um, yeah, just look out for that, that uh, a belt drive one may get some problems changing belts, may not be that easy to change the belts. This is a bit tricky on a couple of the belts in here. One of them is fairly straightforward, but the other is quite a fair amount of stuff got to come out to try and get the belt in, then you've got to go and buy the belt, etc. So, um, you know, I don't know how long a belt lasts. You can get, you can get lucky, they could last for years, but uh, you could get unlucky and get a deck where you're just gonna have another couple of months and you're gonna have to go and buy a set of belts for it. So bear that in mind, obviously the older the deck, the higher chances that is. So what I would say is that um, if you're a beginner and you want it hassle free kind of thing, I'd stay away from the, even though these look quite nice, I'd stay away from these old decks, I think, because they're a little bit, you know, they have a little bit of trouble with them. This one here is a little bit noisy on the, one of the channels, so quite a bit more noisy than this. Uh, probably a transistor or something that he's replacing there. The top end of this deck isn't really there. So I think the Eds are probably worn a bit on this deck here as well. This deck here has got a ALPD. It kind of searches backwards and forwards through the tape. You can say go two tracks forward, two tracks back, one track forward, all that kind of stuff, skip tracks. And while it's doing that, the tape's passing over the Ed quite quickly. And obviously, it's, the more you do that, you're going to start wearing the Ed out. So that's maybe the reason this deck here uh, doesn't sound so bright as it should do maybe. So, you know, my advice would be, not if you really, really wanted one of these, it's going to fit in your system, you like the look of it, and you're going to pay a bit of a premium for these, because these are quite old, and getting a bit more like, uh, uh, you know, people want them a bit more now. Uh, this top one, I think, on eBay sells for about £100 thereabouts, and this bottom one for about 80 quid. So, you could get them, and they may not last that long, and they have underlying issues as well. So, uh, as a newbie, if you're coming into uh, buying a cassette deck for the first time, this probably isn't the kind of deck to buy. These are 74 and 79. Reading on the internet, a lot of people seem to think the golden age for cassette decks was between 1983 and about 1990. That's kind of like the golden age where they kind of got everything right and you know, these decks sounded quite nice. So uh, maybe look for a, a deck in that kind of period uh, and hopefully one that hasn't been used too much. Right, another thing to look out for is the Eds itself. So uh, I'll take a picture of this, hopefully you're going to see it, but uh, you go on eBay, places like that, or second-hand shop, if you get the door open on the cassette, have a look inside, hopefully they put a picture up where you're buying it from if you're getting it from eBay. And if you have a look at the Eds, make sure they're nice and shiny. That's uh, both Eds, if it's a two Ed or all three Eds. If it's a three Ed machine, you want them nice and clean, nice and shiny. Uh, You've got the capstan motor, the little spindle there. See if that's nice and shiny as well, give an indication maybe to uh, how much it's been used. And also that pinch roller, that little rubber wheel that kind of comes up against the uh, capstan itself, that little pin. Uh, have a look at that. It's uh, made out of rubber. Now you want it, you don't want it shiny, you don't want that shiny. Uh, otherwise that's probably uh, on its way out. And you want to look at it and see if that roller hasn't got the brown residue of the tape you know, it's usually a black roller, hasn't, hasn't turned brown in the centre, the same width as the tape itself, where the residue of the tape has stuck to the head. Maybe another indication that uh, the machine has been used quite a bit. So things just to look out for uh, if you're buying it uh, off of eBay or a second-hand shop or something like that. 
another thing to look out for is uh, go to a few websites, read a few reviews on your cassette deck you're thinking about buying, but uh, go to a website, iFi Engine or tapeheads.net. There's some great information there. Type in your model number. Now, think look out for is the actual specifications of the machine. Now, <clears throat> you, you know, if you went and bought it brand new, maybe a bit more of an indication to when you went and bought it second hand, because obviously the head could be worn out, the motors could be knackered, the belts could need replaced, and all that kind of stuff. But it may give you an indication how good the machine actually was, and hopefully still is when you get it, when you've bought it and it's turned up on your doorstep, is that uh, on them sites it'll give you a specification, for instance, uh, it'll give you the frequency response of the deck. For example, that may range from 30 hertz to 17 kilohertz, and that 17 kilohertz, it may have next to it metal, it may have it next to it chrome, and that means that it needs a metal tape to get the 17 kilohertz, or a chrome tape to get the 17 kilohertz. So for instance, it may just turn around and say 30 hertz to 17 kilohertz metal, and that will mean that the metal tape is required for you to get the 17 kilohertz out. Again, as if you would have bought this brand new, things could change over that time, obviously, with the heads being worn out, etc., etc. The circuit inside not performing as it should do, being an old machine. Uh, if that was a metal, then you, you may not be, you know, may not get a metal cassette, you may just want to use a normal cassette. So if you're using the normal cassette, that would come down drastically. And as normally, like normally kind of look at these figures in the past, and that a 17 kilohertz uh, metal one would probably come down to about 13 kilohertz for using a normal tape and about 15 kilohertz for a chrome tape. So just look at the specs. Obviously the better the specs, the better the machine should be. But there's no guarantees, like I say, because you don't know the past of the machine. But it may just steer you in the right direction. Another thing would be wow and flutter. And another thing would be the signal to noise ratio on it as well. Just a few things to look out for to uh, kind of help you maybe steer you in the right direction. If you've got two or three to choose from, you may be able to whittle out which is the best out of them three because just looking at the machine may not give it away uh, which is the better one. Obviously, read some other reviews, etc. But that's something to go and have a look at the specifications of the unit before diving in and buying one. I know we're not paying a lot of money, but it's still nice to have a look at the specifications. Another thing to maybe to look out for as well, if you're just really flicking through very quickly on eBay uh, pictures and trying to grab one that uh, kind of grabs, you know, pick one that grabs your fancy, so to speak, is these meters uh, a giveaway on some decks, not particularly these old, old decks that are 40 and 50 years old, because these are old analog meters. And if what I'm going to say to you, was true about this, it would give you a false reading really because this deck here does sound better than this bottom deck even if this one was kind of like put right kind of thing I think this is still going to sound better, it's a better made deck but the meters are a lot, lot smaller on here than they are here but so these are quite nice, these are really big meters, quite easy to read a little bit smaller but don't forget this is four years older as well so on these analog meters, it may not tell you so much as it does on the digital ones, I think, uh, as a rule of thumb kind of thing. Well, if you've got a digital display, and what I mean by that is you've got some LEDs, it may be just actual LEDs, five or six of them. It may be like a fluorescent display uh, going across uh, where they may start off green. Someone may take a picture of it actually working or something like that. You may be able to work out or go on the internet and to find out a bit more information. It may tell you how many segments the display is the more segments, as a general rule of thumb, the better the deck. So, you know, for instance, if you've got a deck that's just got five segments and you match it up with a deck that's got 20, generally speaking, the 20 deck machine should sound better than the one with just five segments. It's just if you're quickly going through on eBay, flicking through the decks and they've got little pictures, you may be able to see that in a picture and you can kind of skip some. Uh, as you're going through rather than looking at every single deck. So this is generally speaking, there is some exceptions obviously like anything else, but generally speaking, uh, if it's just got one deck, uh, sorry, one cassette in each unit and it's got say a 20 uh, LED display or fluorescent display, 20 segments versus one with five, then the one with 20, you know, would be the one to go for, I think, or to put on your shortlist or to have a look at and check out a bit more, check the specifications, all that kind of thing. Uh, maybe a little bit different with these double decks because some of these double decks uh, in stack systems and that sometimes have quite a big display on them as well. But um, you know, generally speaking, generally speaking, I'm talking here just something else maybe that can uh, help you out deciding which deck to buy. But again, once you've kind of narrowed it down, then look at the specifications. But again, this is if you went and bought it brand new 
when you're getting it second hand, you don't know the condition of the heads, the conditions inside the belts, all that kind of thing. So it's, it is quite a minefield buying these cassette decks, I think. Now, they've got the unit home, um, and it's not sounding as good as you thought it would do. So a few things you can do, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe a bit muffled, uh, play and recording. It may sound not very bright, a bit dull, that kind of thing. A few things you can do maybe to liven it up and get it in better shape than it actually is. One thing obviously is to clean the tape heads of the machine using something like this. This is, I, I can never say it, so I've got it here. This whole coal uh, solution here, uh, isofofol, absolutely useless to say it. I'll show you a picture of it on the screen anyway. Now I usually clean the heads with this with a cotton bud and I usually clean the ro a pinch roller and the actual uh, capstan as well. But not everyone does that. Some people clean that pinch roller with some uh, soapy kind of like soapy water uh, it's your choice i think really i've never had any problems using this stuff here but uh, some people say don't use it so uh, maybe just use a light soapy water uh, just a dab of it on a cotton bud or something like that to give that a clean uh, the capstan and the uh, pinch roller so you can give the tape heads a good clean and you may have to do them two or three times you could demagnetize the heads as well if you've got a demagnetizer but it's a bit more expense but we'll forget about that for the time being. We'll just clean the heads, give it another go, and hopefully that's livened up the sound and brought it back to maybe where it should be. Not always the case, and, and, and just coming there very, very quickly, not all these cassettes are easy to get to, to the edge, so let's just bear that in mind as well. You may just want to do a little bit more research on the deck you're buying, find some pictures on the internet, etc. how easy it is to get in. Now this deck here is fairly easy. We can just take the tape out. We can get to them here without doing anything else, if I really, really wanted to, I can undo these two screws here. Just undo this one here, it takes a little bit of time. Then this one here, and this plastic cover will become completely off. Without breaking it all, let's just go and put that aside like that. And I can really easy get to the edge now. They're literally just there, so I can give them a good clean. Now with this other deck, it's a bit more complicated I'd have to take this case off. Uh, well, I wouldn't, to be honest with you. I can get to them, but to give them a proper clean, I would have to take the case off. And there's a plastic housing in there. So if I just eject this, as you can see, this is this is done completely different to this deck here. The tape's right inside. I can get to the edge. If I push that down, I can probably get to them with a cotton bud and give them a, a, a reasonable clean, maybe. But if you want to get all over the edge and you want to get in there properly, uh, do the pinch roll and the caps and that you would have to take like I say the top off this plastic housing off which is a bit held in with screws and brackets and other bits and pieces There's a few more bits I've got to take out before I can actually get this plastic unit out so it's a little bit more long-winded and not so easy so um, you know if you're thinking about doing a bit of little bit of maintenance yourself a little bit harder to get to this deck than a nice easy to get deck uh, as in this bottom deck here it's so much more easier to clean the heads Right, one last thing we can do, uh, if the tape is still not sounding as you're expecting it to sound, it still sells, sounds uh, dull, uh, muffled, uh, distorted, something like that. The eyes are not as high as you think they should be, they're pretty subdued. Is we can adjust the azimuth of the tape head, and that means moving the tape head in and out uh, along the path of the cassette itself, the actual tape itself. On this particular deck here, it's a bit tricky. Got to undo it all, undo that plastic as I said earlier. Quite tricky. So maybe something you want to look at uh, before you buy your deck. How easy it is to access the edge to get to them to clean them, and also maybe to do this uh, azimuth control. On this deck, it's pretty straightforward. If I show you a picture of it with none of the keys pressed in, and uh, what I'm going to do now is show you a picture of it with me pressing this play. Uh, key pressed down you can see the heads are moved in position I can see the screw it's normally a Phillips screw just one side of the edge head normally that you're going to adjust the other side is normally uh, in a fixed position and uh, make sure you get a screwdriver that fits that head nice and tight you don't want to start shearing the head off anything like that just be careful just small turns if the screw starts to get really loose then stop because we don't want to undo it too much and the screw falls inside the mechanism you're running around trying to find it, all that kind of thing, and it could be tricky to get back in place. You want to get yourself a pre recorded cassette, uh, a pre recorded one you go and buy in the shops, a decent one uh, you may have in your collection that sounds quite nice, or you, you 
played it around your mates or you remember it sounds quite nice that kind of thing maybe a bit awkward if you don't know that but hopefully you're going to find one maybe use two or three <clears throat> uh, put one in there and we're going to adjust the head what we're going to look for now and so when we're adjusting it we're going to move that screw left or right go either way to start off with small little turns slowly maybe your headphones on if you've got a set of headphones or your speakers on at a reasonable level so you can hear clearly is we're going to turn that and we're going to listen for the brightness we're going to try and make this track sound brighter more tingle to it more magical kind of thing more of these now when it goes it's going to sound you're going to get more and more tingling going on more higher frequencies we're going for so we're going to turn that head one way and then higher frequencies may start to creep up they may start to creep down obviously if they're going down you're probably going in the wrong direction so turn the screw the other way it may take more than a few turns. I've had a cassette deck years ago and had one, which I don't know what happened to it, but someone had fiddled around with the head when I got it. It sounded really bad. And I had to turn it quite a few times. But generally speaking, it's just going to be a small turn either way until you get as much high frequency as possible and maybe stop that cassette and try another cassette. Maybe, you know, if you've got four or five different ones, have an average of three of them or something like that because you may get an odd cassette where it's been recorded not great or it's been near a magnet or something like that the sounds deteriorated but hopefully you can have one that sounds pretty good to start off with and you're going to hear them highs you know like I say a song that's quite bright <coughs> excuse me once you get it in that position you're quite happy with it you're going to think that sounds great just another little check to do is to make sure the imaging is correct as well because you can set these decks up and think, oh, I've got a nice bright sound, it's quite nice and bright, that's great. And I can hear that top end there with that tingling and everything like that. But when you come to play it back and maybe listen to your headphones and that, the imaging's not right. Where well, you've got the singer is still coming out maybe too much in your left ear. You know, the vocalist is not dead centre, maybe where they should be. So if you've got your headphones, they should be coming from the kind of ear in the centre of your head. You can't imagine it in the centre of your head. They may be coming out to the left hand or the right hand side too much, even though you're getting that top end frequency. So it's just a slight adjustment and you will hear the difference that slight adjustment your ear your ear that singer or your kind of feel that singer moving from the left hand say so i say the right hand here actually the right hand side coming back in into like the center image so you get more of a center image of the sound stage then all the other instruments and everything else should kind of fall in place and sound better than they've kind of all stacked over on the left hand side so like i say get the uh tingling that high frequencies up there first you've got that in position but just double check that you've got the image correct of the vocalist as well a pretty good sign the vocalist in the center using center maybe just a slightly off center but definitely won't be just in one ear hole which can sometimes happen if you're just going to uh, adjust the azimuth just to get as bright a sound as possible you'll put it all back together you'll sit back and listen to it and you think oh i'm getting a lot of sound coming out of this you know the vocals are coming out from here but not a lot's happening over the other side, but even though it still sounds pretty bright. Okay, hopefully you may have got a few pointers in this long-winded video of mine. I do apologise for how long it is. There's so, so much more to mention about cassette decks as well, different tape types, all that kind of stuff, you know, different tapes, different manufacturers, all that. A really, really big minefield, but hopefully somewhere along the line, you may have got some information that may help you pick your first cassette deck but if I was going to narrow it down maybe just to two things maybe check the heads see how nice and shiny they are and go and have a look at iFi engine or tapeheads.net to get some specifications of your particular machine you're looking for uh, obviously the higher the better but still not going to guarantee that the unit you come you know, to end up buying that's going to be delivered to your door is actually going to meet any of them specifications uh, anyway, good luck with that. That's what I'll say with the old tape and uh, hopefully uh, I'll see you soon with my next video. So thanks.